Okay, our next speaker is Jonathan Jackson. Jonathan is from the National Centers for Environmental Information over at Stennis. He's a local boy, War Eagle. <laughs> and he's going to talk to us about where the HabSauce tool is now. Afterwards, after he gives his demonstration, we're going to keep you around before we break into the sessions a little bit, get some feedback from you on. Good afternoon, everybody. Y'all hear me okay? Excellent. Uh, first of all, I'm not exactly sure what version we're on currently. It's got to be at least four. It may be a good bit higher. Okay. At the root of HabSauce, it is a database of HAB observations submitted by the states. Our state partners send this data to us. We also display it with the map viewer online. Uh, just a quick touch of specific information here. On the uh, left-hand side there, it lists out the specific species, Carinia brevis, of course. You can change the dates. Uh, you can also go down and uh, see the different uh, concentrations as they're displayed in bins. We're going to go through, through this in a demo, hopefully, at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> As currently, we only have Carinia brevis data on here. Uh, we could potentially expand it, of course, with the data to support that. We don't, we don't collect it. It's all submitted to us. Uh, you can find the map viewer and other information as well at habsauce.noaa.gov. Um, there's currently, you know, it's just ballpark it at 160,000 samples currently in the database. Uh, as Jeannie said, uh, early 2000s since operation um, March 2003 is the specific date I had. Uh, it is not a forecast. It is not a forecast. <laughs> I would love a forecast, but I, I want to be clear. Uh, historical data. This is kind of neat. Uh, all the way back to 1953. Uh, I believe that was mentioned earlier in the uh, talk for Florida, a lot of historical data. We've got a lot of other historical data from other uh, other states as well. This is an overview kind of of the, the general structure of Habsos. You can see we get the data in from our state partners, goes into Habsos, then Habsos serves a fairly diverse user group. Uh, of course, the blue economy there, just about every element of the blue economy Absauce can apply to. It's right in the wheelhouse there. Oh, by the way, you're going to see this slide a couple of times, so there will be a test at the end. Okay, this looks a lot like the uh, map viewer slide you saw early in the presentation. Uh, if you look on the left hand side of the screen again, we have uh, changed over to an additional layers tab. Now here you've got several different categories of additional layers. Uh, I believe Jeannie touched on uh, some of the additional information that you could display in the earlier versions. We do still do that. Uh, one of the categories associated data, you see we have numerous different data layers available there. Uh, remotely sensed data, that's all data that's coming in from satellites. Yay, NESDIS. <clears throat> uh, one note, the associated data layer that's uh, displayed there in the picture, those are uh, oyster reefs and I'm sure everybody here knows Mobile Bay. Uh, Uh, oceanographic layers, numerous different kinds of data there. We've got the buoys in there as well. Uh, some of those layers come with a 48-hour uh, forecast option as well. You can do a 24-hour as well if you like that. Uh, the one displayed is the uh, sea surface currents. I know anytime I'm getting ready to go offshore, I take a look at that and get an idea of what I'm going to be experiencing tomorrow. It's usually pretty spot on. And of course, NOAA, so we've got meteorological data on there. Hey, that looks familiar. <laughs> All right. Remember, state partners. State partners, give us the data. I love our state partners. Florida. Florida is one of our biggest submitters, naturally, of course. They do a lot of sampling. They serve all their data up on an FTP site. We've got software that actually goes to that FTP site, pulls it down, brings it into the, to the database. The term I prefer, automagically. I love it. Uh, Alabama, Alabama is doing a lot of sampling. They, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, 
once they once they bring that in, their their schedule changes uh, once a month during the year, and then during the summer months, it's uh, twice a week, twice a week, right? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Make sure I was reading that mm -hmm. right. And uh, they of course email that to me. I'll get that put into a spreadsheet. So that's a little bit of a uh, little bit of fat finger work there. Uh, Mississippi and Texas. Whenever there is an active bloom, they'll submit that data. And there again, it's an email submission requiring the same manual ingest and, and entry into a spreadsheet. <clears throat> now, once the data is there, it can be accessed through a, a couple of different avenues. Uh, the data is archived at the NCEI archive. You can access that data through the NCEI geo portal. That record is updated once a year. Uh, you, of course, get on there and you can, you can search for the, uh, the session number displayed there or Habsauce. Uh, you could, you know, there's a variety of keywords that go along with that. <clears throat> of course, if you want more recent data, like say, hey, what's been going on? I went and downloaded the file from the, the geo portal, but the last couple of months weren't in there. Can I get that data? Oh, of course. NCE dot <clears throat> excuse me, ncei.info, they will count you to me. We'll get you taken care of. Of course, you can contact me directly. Um, I will say that that usually takes a couple of days because I have to get with the programmer. He goes in, queries the database, and gets back to me. You know, it's usually about a week, depending on. Um, uh, one other option, of course, is we have a map service link. You can put that into your your GIS software such as ArcMap, it'll pull it all up, display. And that one is nice because it, it does update as everything goes along. Okay, everybody ready? Ta-da! <laughs> I believe that's the last time we'll see that one. Okay, so state partners, have sauce, user groups. You can see we've got a pretty uh, diverse bunch of user groups there. A uh, wide variety of academia. Uh, I've even had a, a specific data request from uh, Plymouth, uh, Plymouth University, that's in the UK. Uh, one note I will say, we're not able to see how many people uh, downloaded data from the archive. So this information is just when we've been contacted specifically. I can only imagine all the other user groups as well. Uh, numerous government entities, uh, private enterprise, nonprofit use, public public use. Say if you were going to go cobia fishing, say one day this week and yeah. what, yesterday, wanted to wanted to see what was out there before you ran ran through it and filled your live well full of red tide water, killing all your live bait. Uh, another wonderful little use case we became aware of uh, this past fall. Uh, Dr. Chuck Wilson was able to use it to kind of monitor the, the red tide approach to Alabama and anticipate its arrival and make some uh, harvest decisions based on that information as well. Okay, I'd like to do a demonstration of the Habsauce map viewer now. You can find the Habsauce map viewer on the Habsauce webpage, that is habsauce.noaa.gov. <clears throat> the page will load like this. We've got several links uh, with extra information related to HABS and HABSAUCE itself along the edges, the bottom. Uh, there is also this link, which is the HABS data in the database archived at the NCEI archive. So that's one way you can access the data, which I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> okay, to access the map viewer, there is this link up here, real small exit to map, or this is a large screenshot from the map viewer with a large play button right in the center. Click that. It'll take a couple seconds to load. <clears throat> All right, we've got the base map loaded and there, there is the current sample data right now. Uh, this map viewer is powered by Esri, so if you're familiar with with these, there are a lot of similarities between them. We have some controls across the top here. 
Uh, you can zoom in. We'll go ahead and zoom in to a, uh, an area I know we're all kind of focused on here. Okay, nice shot of Mobile Bay, coastal Alabama, part of Florida, part of Mississippi here. <clears throat> As I said before, we only have Carinia brevis data. Uh, if we ever started receiving other HAB data and added that to the map viewer, you could select it here. It's already set up, so we're, we're good there. Uh, we have the date range here. You can go in and select a, a later date range, a smaller date range larger date range, you know, it's very flexible. We'll go through some of that later. You could also apply a filter in the uh, form of different conditions, such as uh, cell densities to display. Um, you can also exclude the non-positive samples, like right now. Okay. We have one sample displaying with a, a positive uh, Carinia result, it's this little white dot right here. Uh, as you can see on the legend here on the left side of the screen, we've got the little black X's, which I just took off the screen as not observed. And then we break it down into uh, graduated symbols. The only one displaying right now you can see is of very low density. <clears throat> so let's click on that. It will pull up the results for that particular station. You can see it gives the, the description of the location, the Latin long, the species, date and time, uh, the, the density band, and then we also get some other information. Sometimes we pick up all the data parameters, sometimes we don't. As long as we have the location, date and time, and the cell density, it works. We're good. All the others, extra is just icing on the cake. Okay. Now let's let's bring these guys back. Now, fall 2018 was a little bit of an exciting time in the uh, world of Habs and coastal Alabama. So let's let's take a look at 2018. We'll start with October 1. Run it out to 2018. You can see these are all marked through because they're just not available. November 30th. Okay, and search the database. All right, now we've got some data besides mostly just little black X's displayed. We'll go ahead and take those off, show only the positive results. <clears throat> now, if we go to a spot like, say, right here, where there's obviously a lot of sampling going on, Collect, click that, it'll pull it up. You can see there is a counter here. It shows one of 11. That means there are 11 different samples actually displayed on the map right now, even though you may only be able to discern three, maybe four of them there on the map. Say if we zoomed in really tight, you might could see more, but this way you can see it. See it's at the Navarre Pier. See all the information and you can actually move through the different samples as they were collected throughout this time. Again, this is these are all samples that were collected within our time range here. So as you narrow that time range down, we may only have say one of three there. It just just depends. <clears throat> move that out of the way. Okay. Earlier in the talk I described uh, different layers that we could turn on the map viewer to show. Uh, one layer I mentioned was the Eastern Oysters. We'll bring that up. To turn these layers on, you uh, click the box and then you come up to update map. And it updates fairly quickly. You can see the, the pink here is uh, oysters, oyster reefs as they have been mapped. Okay, another another group is the remotely sensed. Uh, keep in mind, this uh, group of data is satellite data, and so it can be impacted by cloud coverage. You know, what kind of picture was the satellite able to get that day? So let's uh, let's take a look at the true color here. Uh, Ten days ago, I think there was a, a fairly decent satellite image. 
of the Gulf, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it shows some. Let's zoom out a little bit. There, I use the, uh, you can actually use the mouse wheel if you have one to zoom as well. And you can see how, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, more higher values or more turbid water, essentially, is how I interpret it here. Uh, you can see some image imagery of cleaner water over here and some nice blues here. Um, I think this is all pretty pretty well to be expected. Uh, one note I'd like to point out right now is that this data does not correlate with this date range. These layers only go back to 29 days. We don't, we're not able to store years and years and years of, of these data. <clears throat> so technically this, what we're looking at with the browns and the greens does not correlate with the HABs data directly. Now, if we're looking at the current range, then you could, you could actually look at that. All right, oceanography. Look at sea surface currents is uh, one I particularly like to look at. Uh, several of these do come with a uh, what I would consider a short range forecast up to 48 hours. Okay, we'll get that turned on. Give it a second or two to load. Okay, there it is. Kind of hard to see with the uh, the true color turned on, so I'm just going to come up to this list up here, and I'm going to turn off the true color. There, that's a little better. Minimize that. And as you can see, we've got, got the current sea surface current depicted here by the, uh, by the direction of the arrows and as well as the color of the arrow itself. So let's go to the legend tab right here. And now we can see kind of what those colors represent, get a sense of, uh, you know, okay, this is a pretty strong current pushing in right here, but say right here, just south of Dolphin Island, that's a a, a purple. So that's a that's a pretty pretty much a, a slower current. Going to be water's going to be other than wind current. It's going to be pretty calm that day. Uh, another thing you would notice with this particular current pattern along here is that along say Pensacola area it is actually moving to the east so if this were the current pattern right now with that correlated with this HABS data you could see that this would not be favorable for the Carinia populations to move west along the coast which is our our typical pattern that we see a lot of times all righty go back to the additional layers and since we are NOAA and we do love weather let's throw in for meteorology let's look at the current weather radar okay slip that update the map okay we can see there's some clouds here with a little bit of rain uh you know there's several other available layers in there as well i won't go over that um <clears throat> But yeah, I just want to reiterate that these additional layers, they, you know, they don't track all the way back in through history. They only go back so far in time. Uh, I believe that's pretty well covered it. We've got some additional information that you can go into metadata for the, uh, the layers here. Uh, you can look you know this is the map guide it's got a couple of pointers there for you as well you can go into the definitions to if you have some questions about any of this Alrighty, i think that uh pretty well wraps up the demo um, we'll be taking questions at the end of the session so um, i'll be more than happy to field any questions at that point in time thank you